At Petco tonight, the Padres' new catcher, Derek Norris, has hit safely in each game, plus has shown an attractive abundance of grit and hustle. The Giants' 3-1 start getting extra base power, four doubles and a triple from Angel Pagan. They're set to go. Petco, another big crowd expected on this Friday night to see the world champion San Francisco Giants and our San Diego Padres. And good evening, everyone, with Mark Grant and Dick Enberg. Game two of the four game inning marathon, only one run scored, and it was unearned yesterday. Both uh, teams figure those bats will be rattling tonight. Yeah, I hope so. It was a case of who was going to make the first mistake yesterday, and eventually, after 12 innings, the, the Gigantes are three and one now. They win one to nothing here at Petco Park. It was good pitching, just one mistake, Dick. That was it. Giants have ruined Arizona's home opener, and they uh, spoiled the Padres. They go home next Monday against Colorado. Brandon Morrow, we're going to see him make his major league Padre debut from Toronto. He'll be on the mound for San Diego. So let's introduce the 30 year old. One thing when he was with the Toronto Blue Jays, a nice 10 and 7 record, the ERA sub 3 in the American League. Those are really good numbers. And he had 108 strikeouts. The one thing that I looked out for Brendan Morrow is that he. He's never gone over 200 innings, and he has never really strung together two, three, four years in the big leagues. He's had some issues as far as health is concerned, but hopefully that can be taken care of. A fresh new start for Brandon Moore. We're really hoping for good things from him. He's got a power arm, throws all four pitches. He's got that wipeout slider for a pitch, so hopefully good things starting tonight right here in San Diego for Brandon Morrow. He goes head-to-head -head with a man that's been most difficult to beat for the Padres, Tim Lincecum. He's just been uh, lights out against San Diego, including a couple of no hitters. Very interesting cat, Tim Lincecum. Why? I say that in a positive way. Positive because he's 18 and 6 against the Padres, the 2.27 ERA. Dick, opponents only hitting 193. Now, here's the thing Tim Lincecum, he sports all the pitches. He's gone more off speed nowadays. Remember this kid when he came to the big leagues? He threw 95. He threw 96. Well, the arm is getting a little tired. He's been a lot pitching in the big leagues for a long, long time. He's learning how to pitch at this level and being very successful. Well, last night and yesterday afternoon, the opener with plenty of emotion, including an exit vocabulary from the manager. More to say coming up.
Diego, game two against the Giants. And last night, you saw some of those fiery attitudes from the new roster here at the at ninth inning. A lot of fist pumping, a lot of screaming. And Buddy Black says, those are the attitudes that you're going to have to get used to all season long. You know, it's something we talk about. Uh, you know, playing with, uh, playing with passion, playing with an edge, playing with fire. So it did, doesn't surprise me. It shouldn't. Uh, hopefully, hopefully it, uh, uh, it's something the fans should get used to. That's what we do. So Buddy Black liking what he sees out of the attitudes of these guys. Some fiery attitudes. Hopefully we'll see some fire power out of the bats today as they try and even the series against the Giants. Tim Lincecum on the mound today. First pitch coming up from Fox Sports San Diego. Those folks even all the way from San Francisco for the weekend series with the Giants the world champion says we check on the lineups the starting lineups for tonight's game two of the four game series first for the Giants of Bruce Bochy it's much uh, the same lineup as we've seen the last night Nori Aoki leads it off then Joe Panic Angel Pagan Buster Posey will be not behind the plate but at first base he was a uh, first baseman 30 games last year. Brandon Crawford, what a job he did yesterday. Probably the most valuable player on the Giants uh, team. Casey McGee hits sixth, and Blanco Sanchez, the switch hitting catcher, hits eighth, and then Tim Lincecum. And into his seventh year at the big league level, welcome to San Diego, Brandon Mo Morrow. Really excited to have him out there. Uh, we mentioned earlier that he's had some issues as far as Injuries is concerned, but he's got that power arm when he is healthy. He's got that wipeout slider as well Making his first start this year. Let's see if he has command of the fastball tonight Only 23 games the last two years because of injuries last year. It was a torn tendon sheath in his pitching arm He is supported tonight by this Padre defense brought to you by San Diego County's four dealers Upton and left Myers in center camp and right Corey Spangenberg gets the start at third for Middlebrooks. Sam Easton Jerko up the middle with Alonzo, the Padres top hitter in the first four games at first base. Derek Norris behind the plate for the 30 year old from Santa Rosa and Cal Berkeley. Brandon Morrow Spangenberg getting his first start of the new season. I'm excited to see Corey at third base. Your 
are set to go on a rather cool night for us in San Diego. You wonder how the ball is going to be able to fly. It's not the marine layer so much, but a little chillier. 60s. Vic Carapaza, it's a new umpiring crew from the one we saw the first four games. Larry Van Over, Ron Culpa, and Brian Knight. Big scoreboard is so dominant, and everyone who comes for the first time just uh, uh, mystified. It just uh, locks in your vision and focus. Sometimes you wonder which, where should I look? It's mesmerizing. It's almost like it almost looks fake. It's like they're superimposing a big picture on that just blank board. Ready to go. Brandon Morrow's completed his warm-ups. Former first-round draft pick. Of Seattle back in 2006. He was the fifth player selected overall out of Cal Berkeley, and he will face Nori Aoki. Aoki with a current 12 game hitting streak going back to last year. He finds himself a foothold in that batter's box. Morrow looks in, gets his sign from Norris. And the fifth game of the season underway. Bruce Bochy leading the Giants to three World Series titles the last five years. Twelve years the skipper of the Padres. Ninety one on that fastball one and one. You know it just goes to show you that you don't have to be the best team in all of baseball to win a World Series what was the Angels last year and nearly almost won 100 games 98 games out the first round. Kansas City went on their way the Giants working their magic for three years. Well, they won the close games, didn't they, Mark Grant? They have of late, and look at uh, already this year, they have three wins, two of them by one run, including yeah. yesterday. That's what it boils down to. Timing is everything, and then getting in those big games and going over to the bullpen and having guys like Madison Bumgarner doesn't doesn't hurt matters. And Hunter Pence when he's healthy. Up the middle and a base hit. Brandon Morrow greeted by a solid single off the bat of Aoki. So he's hit safely now in 13 games in a row his best ever 15 when he was with Milwaukee. That's Aoki's M.O. when he is at the plate slap the ball hit it hard on the line or on the ground. If I'm a pitcher I'm going to try to pitch him maybe up in the zone. If he gets underneath the ball you know he can hit it out of the ballpark but he's not really a long ball threat. Joe Panic came up in midseason a year ago and was a important part. Of that championship team. Off to a three for 12 start. Ball one, 94. So he hikes the velocity on that pitch. Morrow, a career record of 42 and 43. He's a strikeout pitcher, more strikeouts than innings pitched throughout his career. One and one. Yeah, Brand, uh, Brandon really hasn't gotten a chance to put it together as far as string years together at the big league level. First up at Seattle at 07, then in the minor leagues 08, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Toronto, minor leagues, minor leagues, rehab assignments. That's got to be frustrating for a guy. So we're hoping good things for Brandon Morrow. 2 and 0 oh is the count. Flick foul off the third base side. He's a type 1 diabetic. And you look at Grisamer Despagne came in long relief yesterday and was absolutely perfect. 14 up, 14 down. No Padre pitcher in long relief has ever gone that many consecutive outs. So Despagne in the record book. Runner goes and it's slapped foul down the left field side. Bruce Bochy will do that. They've got some speed on this team. The Giants to Aoki, Brandon Crawford. But Dick, you were bringing up the uh, the diabetic, uh, type 1 diabetic for Brandon Morrow. And uh, it's something he monitors after he comes off the mound every inning to see uh, his blood sugar count. Of course, uh, requires uh, daily injections of insulin. And he's an inspiration uh, to those who suffer from that disease and know you can still be a big league pitcher. Fouled away. He learned that he was a diabetic. 
Moreau when he was a senior in high school and you can imagine as a young athlete and you get that news and you oh, wonder yeah. uh oh what's going to happen to me. Well. He's found uh, the right medical. Attention and application. And he's made his way to the big leagues as a number one draft pick out of college. Swing and a miss and Morrow has his first strikeout. Went to the changeup. Well, we've seen the fastball. We saw a breaking ball that Joe Panic pulled in foul territory down the first baseline and then finishing him off with the changeup. Angel Pagan greeted with some booze, a little confrontation, um, nothing that serious. At the end of the game yesterday between Pagan and catcher Derek Norris. Off to a good start, six for 18 and five of the hits, extra bases. Had a triple, ninth inning last night. Well, this is one of those situations where Bruce Bochy may put something I mentioned the speed this year for the Giants. Blanco, Pagan, Crawford, Aoki, Panic. They've got speed. They can do some things. Misses outside. But Black in his ninth year. Replaced Bruce Bochy. So these two men, uh, rival managers, nine seasons with their respective clubs. Wing and a miss. Now here's that incident last night late in the game. Craig Kimbrell on the mound, and apparently it was a piece of gum, and Pagan flicked it at Norris, and he took exception. An exchange of words, nothing more than that. Yeah, you know what? Derek Norris did the right thing. He didn't take off his mask until after the fact. He just stood there. Pagan was a little animated, but you know, I'll tell you what, I loved the fire. I loved the emotion that its team after the triple, who's left stranded, Kimbrell ends the inning, running off the field. Did you see the reaction? Not only those two guys, Norris and Kimbrell. But the position players coming off the field and the guys in the dugout greet yeah. him on the top step. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, the fire was on and a little bit of boil. One ball, one strike now to Pagan. Change up. Two and one. We thought that uh, Trip Gibson, the plate umpire, Certainly went over the line and warning both benches. Hey, you know, you exchange him a few words. Come on. Yeah, I'm not sure what exactly was the uh, conversation down there, but I thought it was kind of a, a quick. I thought it was a quick motion to each dugout to indicate a warning, and then you know, the hook to Venable, and then the hook to Buddy Black. Yeah, Buddy said it just a little vocabulary. <laughs> Sent him <laughs> off to the clubhouse. Either side was very happy with the calls yeah. of the plate umpire. He was really inconsistent. Two balls, two strikes to count. Line to Jerko back to first on double play. And that'll do it for the Giants in the first. The Padres will bring up Myers, Spangenberg, and Kemp. Giants scoreless in the first.
line drive. First inning tonight. Now the Padres come to bat against Tim Lincecum. Can they find a formula to score runs against Lincecum? Who has a 7 and 0 record in the last eight games and two of the seven wins, no hitters. He's now 30, as is his opponent, Brandon Morrill. Will Myers starts it off. High fly ball. He just missed that one. Center field. That's way up there. <laughs> that was a major league fly out. One away. Padres lineup is brought to you by Toyota tonight. Will Myers, then Corey Spangenberg. Kemp and Upton in the middle of the order. Derek Norris drops down to the fifth spot. Has a hit in every game so far. Yonder Alonso is the best average for the Padres early. Then Jerko, Amarista, and Morrill. Scouting report for veteran right-hander Sands the Mustache, Tim Lincecum. Fastball for show, off speed for Doe. It's almost as if he throws that fastball to just give those hitters a look-see. There's a strike there, but you might see these hitters go after that fastball early because he throws the breaking ball and also that split changeup that tumbles up there. Foul back by Spanchenberg making his first start of the season. As he makes the major league roster for the first time on opening day. 0 for 2 so far. Came up in September and showed uh, enough talent that the Padres were eager to see him back in spring training and they knew they this former number one draft pick had a future in the big leagues. Eighty one miles an hour up high. Is that that split finger? It sure is. If it gets up above the belt then it's more hittable is it Absolutely, not? Absolutely because it won't break as much. Good call. Outside. Now keep an eye on the velocity as well. That's an eighty nine mile an hour fastball. He'll touch maybe 90 91 and he goes into the change grip. You can see it right there and then we'll adjust accordingly in his glove. He's got a little uh, nail work going on right there. I just fouled past third. A nice story about Lincecum and it relates to buying an automobile. From Dave Roberts the Padres bench coach. And it all. <laughs> that one rolling up the first base. Oh, stays <laughs> fair. How about that? A base hit for Spangenberg. Foul, 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 fair. You don't see that kind of infield hit. Had so much English on it, it spun back into play. Well, that's a one in a hundred infield hit. I don't think I've ever seen anything like that. This ball is cued off the end of the bat. It, like Dick said, it's got so much spin on it. It's making its way fair. It finds the grass and still keeps going. <laughs> well, that's one to put in the bank. Corey Spangenberg, his first hit of the season. What other magic do you have in those hands of yours? Got Matt the shift. Camp comes up. Got the shift, Dick. Three on the left side. That gives him 100 feet on the right side to aim at, but you know, he's not going to give in. Ball one. He's always been a successful early hitter in the season, Kemp. His April average lifetime is 316. And those are his numbers just this year. Five for 17, looking for his first Padre home run. High in the air, slicing into the right field corner. A long run for Blanco, but uh, that's well back into the crowd. Well, Corey Spangenberg breaking up the no hitter. Good for Corey. Not a baby kid. Yeah, last year, Lincecum was 5 and 0 oh with a no hitter and a 1 4 0 oh ERA against the Padres. Pitched his no hitter here two years ago and then repeated up in San Francisco in June last year. But this is, is not the same lineup no. that he shackled the last couple of seasons. It called there. Apparently during the offseason Lincecum who had become somewhat estranged from his father and mentor Chris uh, got back together and he wanted to go back to the roots of his pitching technique taught by his dad who is a high school coach former worked at uh, Boeing up in Seattle. 
Runner goes. Ground ball to third. That's a fair ball. Long throw by McGee. Spangenberg going to try to make it the third, and he does. Two bases on an infield out. Some bold base running yeah. from Spangenberg. He's got good wheels. You have to have the good wheels to be successful and take first to third on a 5 3 put out. He's off and running on the pitch. Flash look. Here's crack of the bat. Picks up the baseball as soon as McGee got rid of that baseball. Stay on that bag. Flash yeah. look. Yeah. Have, have to see if it's a line drive. It's a fly ball. Well, if it had been a line drive, he was a dead duck. Yep. Whether that was a steal, straight out steal, or hit run, nevertheless, he winds up at third for Justin Upton. Four for 17 on the new year. One hit in each of the first four games. Chance to give the Padres the early lead. 89 on the fastball. On the high strike from Vic Carapaza. I'll go down to my notebook. High strike. Oh. Well, you've got to keep a book on umpires yeah. if you're a hitter or pitcher. What they're going to give you, what they want. Another pitch upstairs and successful 0 and 2. And according to the Honda Fox tracks, you just saw the first two pitches are, in fact, in the strike zone against Justin Upton. Now, for the viewers at home, that strike zone you see, that adjusts to the hitter. That's just not one template square. That adjusts from the knees. To the top of the strike zone where a strike should be called. Can't score on Lincecum in the first inning. Leave a man at third. We go to the second. All right. Well, I've got to, uh, I've got to step up my game, Mr. Enberg. Mm -hmm. Hey, the bopper's got to pop. Not right? B bop now. A bop. <laughs> no, not yeah, yeah exactly. I'm talking guys through the lineup like Camp Upton. Even Norris has got some pop. Jed Jerko. Hey, Will Myers can get into one. Hopefully they uh, they start bopping with those bats and doubles. No double plays. I like it. Yeah. What the Padres hit into four double plays. Yeah, and that cost them a couple of times with the man at third and one out. Buster Posey leads off the second the all star catcher playing first base tonight. Brandon Veld again not in the lineup although he took batting practice and he did 
run not hard but in batting practice a final swing took first base took a turn so we might see him off the bench there's a looper into left center field that's falling in a hurry and Posey has a base hit not hit hard but wedged in a perfect place lead off man on oh, Posey continues to hit well at Petco 339 lifetime here brings up Brandon Crawford Crawford five for 18 on the new year and his glove work and his defensive play literally won the game for the Giants yesterday several times mm. he made plays one of them the double play remember yep. dived in the glove flipped gloved the second with a man at third one out that could have been the game and I think this is his year he's been ignored in the gold glove competition but the last few years he's indicated that that's the kind of Defensive stylist he is. He's going to get my vote if I had one. <laughs> <laughs> no, if he can get leather to it, he's going to make the play. He is that good. This is nubbed. <laughs> not, not enough <laughs> English on that one to kick it back into fair territory. And why you see the hitters hitting that ball off the end of the bat? Well, good deception, good arm speed out of the pitcher's hands, both Lincecum and Morrow. An off speed pitch, so they're out in front of it a little bit too much. And it's Friday night, crowd still pouring into Petco Park. Many of those uh, celebrating the party at the park, which is a Friday affair throughout the season. Well, tomorrow it's a 5 30 game, 5 o'clock here on Fox Sports San Diego. And what a matchup. James Shields gets his second start for the Padres against Madison Bumgarner, the World Series pitching hero for the Giants. Expect to see a lot of you here. If you can't make it, join us at 5 o'clock here on Fox Sports San Diego. Bumgarner. He's only 25. I know, it's unbelievable. Yep. What was it 270 innings combined last year? 270. Wow. And he has the best ERA in the World Series ever, ever. Had a Babe Ruth and Kerry the Cad Burkeen, Koufax, and all the rest of the stars. Swag and a miss. That's another good change. He's got a couple of victims on that changeup. One away to Casey McGee. Well, if Brandon Morrow can get ahead and with the fastball or with the breaking ball and then flip that change up there to him, it almost looks like a split grip, maybe. Great arm speed and great tumbling action down the way. No chance for Brandon Crawford. McGee, a single in five trips in the 12 inning marathon yesterday, made a couple of errors. Comeback player of the year, McGee, last year in Miami. After he had spent a year in Japan and really got his hitting stroke back playing in the Japanese league. Breaking ball. Well, if you're just joining us, um, there are two new faces out in the Padre bullpen tonight. They've called up Chris Rerick, the 27 year old lefty, and Brandon Maurer. We have Brandon Morrow on the mound. Brandon Maurer, 24 year old right hander from El Paso. That's in there. Good pitch. 0 oh 2. Nick Vincent has been optioned to El Paso. Right at the knees. And Ian Kennedy injured last night in the third inning, hamstring, placed on the 15 day disabled list. Swaying and a miss. Third strikeout for Morrow. Yeah, just as I was mentioning, Brendan Morrow getting ahead with a little breaking ball, a fastball, and then he drops the changeup on him. Three for three strikeouts with that change. Two outs. 
Gregor Blanco, the right fielder, steps up. There's he in the in uniform, rooting for his teammates. He said he's never had a hamstring injury before. Here at age 30, he felt a tug in the second inning, and then when he went out in the third inning, it started to get tighter. Rather than risk him re-injuring, they placed him on the 15-day disabled list. I think that's just a sign of getting old. 30, the, yeah, it is old. I pulled the hamstring getting out of the sack this morning. <laughs> I didn't even do anything. Yeah, well, it, it happens, yeah, right? Yeah, you got to roll out of the bed, you know. <laughs> I, I try to tell you that. You can't just leap out of there. Posey at first, two outs now. So Maurer acquired from Seattle, Brandon Maurer out in the pen in the Seth Smith trade. Hard throwing, he gets it up there 97 98. And Rarick gives the manager Black another left hander in the bullpen to go with Frank Garces. That's a nice luxury to have. Hop right to Alonzo. That's a pepper one hopper. And the inning comes to an end. And the Padres will have Norris leading it off. Will lead it off, and there's confirmation of the transactions today. Kennedy on the DL, Nick Vincent to El Paso, Maurer and Rurick, a right and a left hander, brought up to the big club. Rurick will make his major league debut when first used. Maurer has seen limited duty while in Seattle. Lots to like about Derek Norris, the man leading off. And he shows some spunk and grit and hustle and all the things you like about a ball player. And he's produced six base hits, hitting 333. There's that off speed pitch from Lincecum. He is a gamer, no doubt about it, huh? Blue collar. Hey, great quote. Loves to have fun. All business on the field. Love it. Taking care of the pitching staff. One and two. In fact, I'm calling it right now. He's better. He's more bad than Chuck Norris. Oh, better. We, we all good. know how badder he is, yeah. and how bad Chuck Norris is. The butcher of the English language with the best. Of a batter can be a good mm -hmm. batter. Yeah. One and two. Lays off that split finger. Well, when he was an Oakland Athletic, Derek Norris had a 3.13 catcher's ERA. That was the lowest mark in the junior circuit. Third lowest in all the major leagues last year. Going inside, and the count goes full. 
good to see occasionally a fan and lots of fans actually come to the ballpark saluting Tony. Oh yeah. Mr. Padre indeed. Missing first year without him here. Mm -hmm. Home schedule. In the dirt ball four. And that's something else Norris gives the Padres. Good eye. He walked a lot in Oakland. He's shown that he's very selective as a leadoff walk for the Padres as we check on the Giants defense brought to you by Renovation Realty. Aoki Pagan Blanco left to right. Corners of the infield, McGee and Posey. Crawford and Panic, the double play combo. Sanchez behind the plate for Lincecum. Two errors last night for the Giants, but the Padres could not capitalize on the one that nothing defeat. Yonder Alonso, seven for 15. That comes out at 457. Pops that up off third. It'll be out of play. In fact, it's even better than that. Alonso, the seven for 10 and two walks in his last. 12 plate appearances. Let's see, 7 for 10. That's a 700 average, right? That's right. And then you throw in a couple of walks for the on base yeah. percentage, which is 556 on the season. With all the right handed hitters in the lineup, he should benefit. He's going to see a lot of right handed pitching. Not good here. One out there. Tag play there. Another double play. Well, the Padres have hit into far too many of those in the first two home games. That one goes 3 6. Pretty nice play by Buster Posey. He knows exactly the ball was hit to his left, right? His momentum's going towards first base. So rather than going to second base for the force, when that tag is made at first, you'll hear the infielders yell, tag, 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 indicating, okay, the force is off. Got to make the tag. Just as the professor described it. Jed Jerko, the hitter. He hit into a couple of double plays, but one was because Crawford made a sensational diving stop behind second and flipped. To panic with a glove and panic return for the double play. Jed starts two for 13. Well, you get all that action from Lincecum as he, you know, that strong push off the rubber for his size, the longest stride toward home plate yep. of anyone in baseball. And you almost think it's coming 95 miles an hour. And it used to have that velocity, but he hasn't hit 90 yet tonight, has he? I haven't seen a 90. You're absolutely right. 5'11. That stride's got to be longer than his height as we take a look at his motion. I mean, you talk about a max effort, long stride. Look at how far his foot is off the rubber, even before he throws that ball towards home plate. His foot is a good foot and a half away from that pitcher's plate when the ball is released from his hand. Few Padres have had any success against Lincecum. Jerko, three for nine, the best of anyone in the starting lineup. And he strikes out Jerko, and that's it for the Padres in the second. Second punch out for Lincecum. We go to the third, no score.
Oh, the double play, the infield in runner third. Alexi Amarista at shortstop. Now, see how far away Jed Jerko is at second base? As soon as this ball is struck, Amarista backpedaling. Fires it right at the belt buckle of Jed Jerko. Hey, not only do infielders have to get a good jump when the ball's hit directly at them, but Jerko recognizing the ball off the bat and busting his tail over to second base to complete that double play. And that was the ninth inning when Pagan had let off with a triple. A pop-up in that key double play with the infield in sent the game to extra innings. Strike to the catcher Hector Sanchez. Good hitter. Side corner. Sanchez from Venezuela. So many outstanding players from that South American country. Stocky 234 tips the Toledos. Bruce Bochy loves Sanchez. Loves him as his backup. He goes around swinging, and that'll be the third strikeout. Record 2 3 on the putout. Make that four strikeouts for Morrow. Been baffling the Giants hitter so far. Here's Lincecum. Throws right, hits left. Lifetime average of 110. So not a serious threat. But now and then he'll just uh, lay the bat on the ball and he'll go to the grass for a base hit. Past a pillow <laughs> and into the grass. Ball one. And with that said, the outfield playing shallow. Center field and left and playing to go the opposite way. Big time. There it is. Just lay the bat on the ball and you might get lucky. This case 5 3 on the put out. Spanchenberg across to Alonso, two away. Top of the order. Nori Aoki steps up. So the Padres uh, have two Berkeley Bears in their starting rotation Tyson Ross and Brandon Morrow. Tyson will see him next on Sunday on Military Sunday. And he will be opposed by former Padre Jake Peavy. Another terrific matchup. Speed strike. Aoki, after a very successful career in Japan, makes his home in Tokyo. Signed with Milwaukee in 2012. Played with Kansas City last year, and he's been a model of consistency. His three year batting averages 288, 286, 285. Swing and a miss, strike three. How about Brandon Morrow? Five strikeouts through three innings. Middle of the third, it'll be Amarista leading it off for the Padres. No score.
after 12 <laughs> innings. Finally in the 12th the Giants getting the unearned run a Giants fan uh, incognito. And Marista leads it off. I thought we were in New Orleans there for a second. Mardi Gras Mardi Gras is gone isn't it it's passed. Yeah, but that's so much fun some folks just can't take that mask off. Yeah. <laughs> for some people it's a good thing they don't take it off. Watch it. It's always kind of humbling when you open the door on the trick or treaters and they say to you, hey, that's a scary mask. I said, I don't have one on. <laughs> <laughs> Two and one to Amarista. Three and one. So I'm going to tell that story about how good a Used car salesman, or previously owned salesman, I guess what they, they say, um, that Dave Roberts is to sell his Mercedes to Lincecum. The selling point was his uh, license plate, or at least the model of Mercedes, was CLS 55. Sharply hit, panic with a backhand, went away. Chris, what do you have for us? Well, the Padres redid their batting cages during the offseason, and when hitting coaches Mark Kotze and Alonzo Powell had something in mind when they designed it, they wanted it to be a place where guys wanted to spend time in. So you open the door, I'll get to number 19's home inside, named after the late, great Tony Gwynn, who spent a lot of time in there. When they redid it, did some TVs, the leather couches. The idea was they wanted guys that wanted to spend time in the batting cages, just like Tony Gwynn. You know, he'll always be remembered in every way, rightfully so. Morrow. Not many chances to swing the bat in his major league career, playing most of his time, or all of his time in the American League. 0 for 14 interleague play. So anyway, <laughs> the initials of the of the Mercedes apparently. Sold a young Lincecum on buying the car from Dave Roberts because they are the initials of his father, his grandfather, and his brother, CLS, and his number is 55. Perfect. So Dave Roberts was like, You have to have this car. Of you do. And I'm going to give you a. No, I'm not going to give you a special price. <laughs> C corresponds to his dad, Chris. L is his grandfather, Leo, and S is his brother, Sean. So I'm sure when Tim Litzcomb sold that car, he had to find somebody with siblings or relatives with those same initials. I think if somebody said, you, would you like to buy Tim Litzcomb's car? Probably That's, there'd be a line pretty long, huh? Yeah. Here's the breaking ball, and Morrow bows to the third strikeout of Tim Lincecum. Time for the T Mobile Game Changer, and it features Tim Lincecum. Last eight times against the Padres, 7 0, two no hitters, 201 the ERA. Batter is hitting 136. Yikes. Yeah, look at that whip. Fewer than one runner. One runner per nine innings. Walks, hits to innings pitched combined. 0.84. In those eight appearances. And you talk about a game changer. Yeah, he's changed his game overall. As I mentioned in the open, he threw hard mid 90s. Ground ball sharply on one hop. Myers grounds out to McGee. A quick inning. One, two, three. The third for the Padres. No score.
dented home plate was back against the Dodgers before the game quite a ceremonial first pitch combo of five great athletes that have San Diego connections from uh, left to right there JJ O'Brien Rob Machado the great surfer Nick Hardwick Tony Hawk and Randy Jones how about that. Yeah, he'd like to bite those five guys for a little chat after the game. Yeah, right? that's great. They all, all looked very athletic as well, throwing that first pitch. A good breaking ball from Morrow. He's got the changeup working. He's got the off-speed curveball working. A little slider. Joe Panic, Angel Pagan, Buster Posey, the three P's in the lineup for the Giants to hit here in the fourth. Panic struck out the first time on that pitch, a changeup. But once you get that arm speed, once you get that feel as a pitcher, that grip, it just becomes so easy and fun to throw. Sometimes there are nights when you struggle throwing it. Doesn't seem to be the case tonight for Brandon Morrow. Grounded to the left side, Amarista on the second hop. One away. And Mark Sweeney joins us down by the Padre. Dug out. He was a former teammate of Tim Lincecum in his early Giant days, huh? Yeah, incredible athlete. I actually took my first at bat in spring training against Tim Lincecum in his first spring training, and I did not see a pitch. I was just tracking the baseball, but I didn't track the baseball too well that day. Come exploding out of his hands. What a talent. Yeah, he's made quite an adjustment, has he not, Mark, into from thrower to pitcher? Yeah, and he's had to, and the velocity will definitely do that. The, the split finger definitely worked off the, the velocity of the fastball. Now he's been a little bit different as a pitcher. He's had to evolve himself, gone through some frustrations, but it's still the guy that inside that competes, and I think that's his, his greatest gift. Angel Pagan lined into a double play the first time. You know, the, it reminds me the story of. The transformation from power pitcher 95 miles an hour to going to all speed and picking your spots is you have to go back a ways. Uh, the California Angels had a left hander Frank Tanana mm -hmm. who threw 95 96 miles an hour hurt his arm and reinvented himself and still continued to win. Spinning the ball little screw ball then. Yeah. yeah hitting the corners. So if you have the competitive fire and uh, the athletic talent, even if you don't have the velocity, you can still be a major league winner. And here's Lincecum as evidence of that. Two balls and a strike. Remember Tanana and Ryan? And left two days of crying. Oh my <laughs> gosh, what a one two punch that was. Problem was, there was nobody out. Sam Lidercons and Bernie Mazzola just didn't get the job done after that. Yeah, Ryan. Got you could almost hear the ball sing from the press box when he cut loose his hundred mile an hour fastball. Two two to Pagan. Well, it's missed. He got ninety six on that one. No, guys, that's what you love about Brandon Morrow. He can reach back with the velocity on the fastball. He has a lot of weapons to strike you out, like you guys already talked about the strikeout ratio. But he can reach back, and I love that because that's always in the back of your mind as a as a hitter, that velocity on the fastball. Foul back. You could see uh, that 2-2 two -two pitch was in the strike zone. Uh, it's much like the pitches to Adrian Gonzalez. Padre pitchers had him struck out twice, and then with a fourth strike, he doubled and homer. Hey, that was a good sign. We just saw 96 on that fastball. He doubled up with the fastball. Now will he drop the change on him right here three two he's got confidence in it. Might go fastball away right here. Ninety seven. His fastest pitch yet. All right she brought her glove and she got herself a souvenir. Hubba hubba. That's why you bring your glove yeah. to the yard. She had a hidden San Diego Padre jersey uh, underneath her coat there. Wanted to show the fans. Again, three and two to Pagan. Bases empty. One out here in the fourth. 
There was the break change up or, or breaking ball. That's 82 miles an hour. Hey, when you can throw a 3 2, that's showing some confidence. He's got the grip down, he's got the arm slot down, he's got the feel for it. That was a hitter, Mark Sweeney. I mean, my goodness. You know, you've doubled up on the fastball. You throw the breaking ball. You still haven't seen the changeup yet. It's got to yeah. be tough. Yeah, you have to be aware of that fastball. Look, try to see it as long as you can. He's fouled off some fastballs. And then try to adjust to everything else. And Pagan earns a walk. That's the first from Morrow tonight. So with one out, here's Posey. Looped the single into left center field his first time. Do you get a sense of the movement of that uh, breaking ball and the change from your position, Mark? Well, you guys talked about the arm speed, especially with the changeup. That's what I'm seeing down here, seeing that velocity on the fastball, but good arm speed on the changeup. Deep down the right field line and foul. Posey. Now 28 years of age and prime of his terrific career. Three years ago, the National League most valuable player. Hey, you know what else I like about Morrow guys is that we just saw a 93 mile an hour fastball. He'll put a little extra on it. Go 96 on you now. Ripped into left field and Posey is two for two. Pagan takes a turn and up and throw in and that'll chase Pagan back to the bag. Two on to the Giants here in the fourth. Really tough to sneak a fastball by Buster Posey. One of the prettiest swings from the right side that I have ever seen. First pitch, 93 up in the zone. Couldn't get on top of it. Fastball in. Look at get the hands through. Look how quick he is to the baseball. And thank goodness that he got on top of that one because if he elevates that one, there's a good chance it's going to go a long way, but it's on the ground, station to station. Double play still in order. The Giants were 0 for 9 with or 0 for 8 rather runners in scoring position yesterday until the 12th inning when Maxwell came off the bench to deliver the base hit that scored the unearned run. So they were 1 for 9 overall. Crawford 2 for 4 and his opportunities with men in scoring position this year. Well, Mr. Mark Sweeney, would you like to elaborate on the swing of Buster Posey? Well, you look at and you marvel at him staying inside the baseball, but you see him pulling inside the baseball. Previously, after that first pitch that he fouled off, he worked his hands inside out of the batter's box. Just a minor adjustment, and obviously that adjustment worked. Breaking ball almost fooled the catcher, Norris. Fifty pitch mark for Morrow. Yeah, not a bad ratio at all. Thirty five fifteen. There's the change. That's such a good pitch working tonight. Could be two. There's one. Back to first. Up the Amarista, Jerko, and Alonzo turn two. And that's it for the Giants in the fourth. Big pitch made by Morrow.
Capcom, two outs, bottom of the ninth, Steve Finley. A long shot and a walk-off grand slam for Finley. Padres center fielder, uh, Felix Rodriguez, and the grand celebration at home plate as the Padres beat the D-backs. And who was one of the first people to meet him at home plate? A full head of hair, Mark Sweeney. Yeah, I had some salad <laughs> back then. I did. And it was one of the greatest moments in 1998. You know, they just snowballed after that. But what a great moment for Finns. Spangenberg, a little tapper back to the mound. And a soft toss low by Lincecum. And Spangenberg, who has the only hit for the Padres, is out. And his hit was a squibbler that spun from foul territory to fair territory in the first inning. And Lincecum has given up only a walk since. Here's Camp, grounded to third. Well, it's a time of, of the year, and most managers will throw it out to you. you know, they want to see 100 at bats, and basically that means the month of April you'll get about 100 at bats, and then you make some judgments, not after the fourth game or the fifth game. And uh, then you sort out your your true roster. You come out of spring training saying, well, this looks to be it for the Padres. Uh, even though there's a lot of strength added, there were unknowns as well. Yeah. How would Myers hit? How would Middlebrooks hit? How would Spangenberg react? And after 100 at bats, and you have the answer. Strike is called by Larry Vanover, the umpire in chief in this crew. Let's come going up and in and out of the hand. It looks like a tough pitch to lay off. Matt Kemp started but couldn't hold up. Oh, he's in the hole two strikes. It's going to bounce this one. Rounded toward third. Backhanded by Crawford. The long throw. Oh, he can play. He can really play shortstop. He took that out of left field and able to make a strong throw off balance to deny Kemp. Doesn't matter what team you play for, what position you play, you have to know in the back of your mind the type of runner, the type of athlete that's going down the first baseline. It gets him by a step and a half, but one swift move from Brandon Crawford. No time to plant the foot. That shows you also the type of arm going away from first base and then getting some fuzz on it across yeah. accurately. On the money. That's a good, uh, good weapons to have as a shortstop. Six ground outs from Lincecum so far. Two away here in the fourth. Upton struck out swinging his only at bat. He goes around. It's interesting. Lincecum was 12 and 9 last year. An ERA almost to 5. In fact, he struggled so much in midseason they relegated him to the bullpen. Took his starting rotation spot away. But against the Padres you wouldn't know it. 5 and 0 oh against San Diego. So you take those five wins away. And uh, he was a 7 and 9 pitcher. And his ERA would have been over 5. He's still a valuable commodity. And in the playoffs, has shown well in relief. Was so violent with that delivery. Max effort. Every pitch. You know, we saw Dave Roberts here, the bench coach, talking with Will Myers, and you can, you can watch so much video. And Mark Sweeney could probably elaborate on this, but there's nothing like having a coach who's been around the Padres for a long time and has seen Lincecum. Maybe they're talking notes on Lincecum. Hey, here, here's what you can pick up. You know. Just the thought process of, of, of facing the two-time Cy Young Award winner. Well, you know, Mark, you guys, excuse me, Dick, you know it's so important how you deal with failure. And, and failure is results. Trying to get hits, trying to get off to a good start. All of these guys are going through that right now because individually you're trying to get yourself on track. Line drive, but right to Crawford, and the inning is over. Seven in a row now retired by Lincecum.
RCP Block and Brick. Start your outdoor project at rcpblock.com. By Petco. What we feed them matters. And by Paul Blart, Mole Cop 2, starring Kevin James in theaters on April 17th. Beautiful Petco Park on this Friday night. Second game of the four-game series with the world champion San Francisco Giants. Still no score after four. Top of the fifth, McGee, Blanco, and Sanchez against right-hander Brandon Morrow. It's been solid through the first four. Walked one, has allowed three hits, and he struck out five. Grounder to third, Spanchenberg loves it and throws him out. One pitch, one out. Oh, you got to love that, huh? As Morrow is now north of 50 pitches. That was number 53. Here as he starts the fifth. Brings up Blanco, grounded to Alonzo unassisted the first time. Yeah, we mentioned the five. San Diego Athletic stars J.J. O'Brien Nick Hardwick Tony Hawk Randy Jones Rob Machado throwing out the first pitch another San Diego well actually two of them making some interesting news as well down in Augusta Georgia. Phil Nicholson is in sixth place at the halfway mark minus six and in second place five shots off the lead Charlie Hoffman and the lead being held by the Phenomenal play of Jordan Spieth, 64 yesterday and shoots 66 today. Wow, that's a record for the first 36 holes at Augusta. I mean, what is he, 22? Yeah, I'm pulling for Charlie Hoffman. Good egg, Charlie. Very involved in the community here in San Diego, particularly the Cystic Fibrosis Foundation. Two and one to Blanco. Well, good for him. And they got a lot of catching up to do to unless Spieth uh, has an off round. He just shoots par the next two days. He'd be tough to beat. Line drive caught by Amarista. Not short changed on that drive. And here's our cold hard fact brought to you by clean crisp Coors Lunch. 2006 most uh, major league uh, draft. How about these are just some of the names. Bochevar first. Evan Longoria the third pick. Brandon Morrow was the fifth by Seattle. Kershaw the seventh by the Dodgers. And Lincecum coming right, right behind as the tenth selection. The eleventh was Max Scherzer. What a what a draft. Fouled back. Sanchez has struck out his first time. Well, we've seen him overload on the left side. The Giants have done that against Matt Kemp. Now the Padres with Sanchez up at the plate. Overloading on the right side. And the outfield just a little bit to go the other way. Will Myers on the shortstop side of second base. Ninety four on the fastball misses. You know, Mark Sweeney, I know you love the game of golf as well. Can you imagine at Augusta Nationals with all the pressure shooting back to back round 64 and 66? Yeah, that's incredible. And then such a great talent Jordan Spieth is. And he put himself in a pretty good situation, but there's also two more rounds to go along with that. It's a mental grind, I'm sure. Two balls and a strike. Good old fashioned fastball at 94. Well, right down the middle, and Sanchez still can't hit it. I think these giant hitters, Mark Sweeney, they maybe got that change up and that breaky ball in the back of their minds this late in the game. Well, he's created that by throwing all of them successfully early in this game, and that's why you start trying to guess with Brandon Morrow. Ground ball right side into the shift, and the outfield grass jerk. Oh, to throw him out. One, two, three. Go the Giants in the fifth. We're at the halfway mark in this one. Four and a half in the book. Padres coming up. 
Derek Norris trying to break that scoreless tie. Express between the two teams late yesterday. Pagan and Norris get into it at home plate, and Kimbrell excited to pitching out of that ninth inning. I've never seen Will Venable this upset. I don't think he's ever been thrown out of a game. Mad at a call by the plate umpire, and out came manager Bud Black, and he got the heave ho. And a little fiery and a little uh, scrappy last night. That's not all bad. I think the challenge system now in baseball has taken a lot of good arguments out of the game. It's totally to see the emotion. totally agree with you there. So maybe uh, these two teams it'll carry on. Hey, in a way, it's a compliment to the Padres. You know, they are now considered as contenders as Norris hits it deep to left center field in the gap. A long run. And oh my, what a catch made by Aoki! Ran down a short double by Derek Norris. The way it's been going. Well, Derek Norris being the professional that he is yesterday, shaking it off and swinging a shillelagh there, nearly going to the track, but good speed by Aoki. And Mark Sweeney, he's doing a good job behind the plate, swinging the bat well, and I'll tell you what, he, he could be a guy who could be a, a great leader on this team. Easily a guy that is uh, becoming a fan favorite just the way he is playing the game. But, yeah, I love the emotion part of it. And when you get emotion from that catcher's position, that could be a great scenario for the pods. Alonso grounded into a 3 6 double play his first time. So Upton ended the fourth inning with a line out to short, and Norris opens his fifth inning with a long out to left center. And this one slicing into the left field corner and will fall into that uh, souvenir piece of pie down the left field line. The grandstand that edges out toward the field of play. A lot of balls go in there during the course of play. That one through the left side. Crawford can't get that ball, and Alonso continues his hot hitting. His eighth hit of the season. Only the second by the Padres tonight. So that play by Aoki chasing Norris's drive. Important or the Padres would have a run on the board. Well, Mark Swinney, what do you think of this swing? Oh, I love it. And when any time Yonder Alonso is working that bat path away to to go to left center and that left center approach, finding that 5.5 hole, it always works for that left-handed swing, patented swing for Yonder. Jay Jerko struck out swinging the first time. Two for 14 on the new year. 
One extra base hit and that was going to the opposite field. Remember the double yep. right field corner. In L.A. Looked as if that's where he was trying to shoot that one. Yeah, and Dick, we saw uh, Jed Jerko before the game working earlier and trying to patent that swing to right center. Now it's not trying to hit the ball the other way. It's putting your body in a good position to try to drive the ball. If they make that mistake with the breaking ball, you can pull it correctly. Runner goes, ball in the dirt, and successfully Alonso into second base on a stolen base. But Lincecum and Sanchez off guard. Well, the high leg kick, and it's a breaking ball. It's in the dirt. No chance for Sanchez. Just picked it. Look at the blazing speed from Alonso. He is faster than he was when he came here that first year. He lost yeah. a few pounds. He's a smart base runner. And now a chance for the Padres to pick up a run with only one out. Alonso in scoring position. Bill Center, the veteran baseball writer, still working uh, with the Padres and doing his fine work with that keyboard. Give it to a kid, Bill. There you go. Come on. Right, three ball. Jerko punched out for the second time. Tim, let's come go with the curveball, and Sanchez frames it right on the outside corner. Let's come going off speed with the runner in scoring position. So two outs. It's up to Alexi Amarista with the pitcher on deck. I wonder what kind of uh, work Lincecum will offer. Whether he'll really give him something good to hit. The Rays were one for eleven with runners in scoring position yesterday, and they're zero for two tonight. One for thirteen against the Giants. No use trying to make him fish for one. Just give him four wide ones. Well, you figure here's Morrow. Yeah. Barely any at bats. 0 for 15 in his entire major league career. It's the right play. Yo, guys, this is such a different process. And you think about the evolution of Tim Linscom and trying to reinvent himself. He never pitched around guys. Even in this situation, he had fastball come in and put away pitches. But this is interesting move for the for the Giants and Tim Linscom. As long as you've got a bat in your hands, you're dangerous. So Morrow a chance to help himself. First and second, two outs here in the fifth. He now played almost 17 full innings with one unearned run being scored. Combined. Let's come at the 65 pitch mark as Spangenberg and Katze go over hitting style suggestion. Oh, good cut by Moro. Took a third strike in the third. Hey, just play a little game of pepper right here. Try to avoid the strikeout. Put the ball in play. Take your chances. Send it right back where it came from. That ground ball to the center fielder. You like that? I play. love the grounder to the center fielder. And you know, this is also a time Mark Sweeney can kind of time in, but where base runners can get a little lackadaisical with the pitcher up at the plate and take a look at the breakdown of both starters tonight. Pretty even. Yep. One and one. You know, as a base runner, you're thinking, oh, okay, well, two outs, you know, the pitcher's up. Really not a great chance to maybe put the ball in play. You get a little sleepy, and then all of a sudden, bang! Infielder sneaks behind you, pick off. Got to be heads up at all times. And a weak wave at the sinker thrown by Lincecum, that split finger, and now it's one and two.
Grounded toward the hole, but Crawford is there as always and gets the fours. Good contact for Morrow, but we've gone five and still no one has scored. Oh, it's yes. Yeah, well, we can hustle home after the game and catch the action ourselves. It's going to be great. This is such a great job. Great production value. Great stories. Tim Lincecum starts the sixth inning against Brandon Morrow. No score. Three singles for the Giants. And Amarista with a good play. The long throw in time. Padres have a nice club out there at short as well. Off the bat, the one hopper, it's got some spin on it, and it's hit so hard that Alexi can plant that back foot and fire a strike. Alexi! <laughs> nice what job, man. kid. You bet. One out to Nori. Aoki, the leadoff man, a single and a strikeout with Joe Panic to follow. Well, this is a remarkable run of outstanding pitching dominating the mm -hmm. action. No score till the 12th inning and then an unearned run last night. No score and we're now into the sixth inning tonight. But this is good news for the Padres rotation that Brandon Morrow his first start as a Padre after two injury plague seasons in Toronto. Showing. Good command, good stuff. Fastball live, terrific changeup. He's got it working, Professor. Glad to see Brandon Moore working into the sixth here. And he reaches out and just softly pulls one to right field. That's how he hits. I hope he's second hit. Doesn't overswing, just punches it. He has a pair of singles. That's four hits now off Morrow. I hope you're not really attacking the ball here, but kind of feeling for it, catching it out in front. Doesn't even take a full swing. Yeah. Just kind of three quarter swing. Off speed pitch, not keeping his hands back, but enough to where he can just service that ball out into right field. Well, that's the Ichiro technique, yep. isn't it? Panic has struck out and grounded to short. Uh, okay, a good base runner. Coach, he likes to mm -hmm. employ the hit and run. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Fastball misses. He's touched 96 with the fastball. That one was at 92. I saw one at 97. Did Mark. You, that's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah, this is a great situation, guys, for that hit and run. You yeah. got to have a 1 0 count, hitters count, and not a bad situation like you talked about, Dick. I would have a, a long set here and throw over to first base, Mark. Yeah, there you go. Oh. Close over there. Hey, that was that was uh, that was that was close. Nice snap throw. Oh, Ooh, boy, he was uh, coming up short on the head first slide. I, I got out. I got out. And Bud Black says, uh, "I think I'd like to challenge Mr. Umpire." What do you think? He's saying to Vic Carapaza. This is the crew chief, Larry Vanover, who made the call. So he'll be part of. I think this is a good challenge, Buddy Black. The challenge process is they'll go back to the East Coast where they have all the facilities for the review. Yeah. Hey, also, you know what? Credit guys like Mike Tompkins, Ben Sostanovich, done in the clubhouse. Nick Ennis, who are working the uh, the video screens and the boards inside in the bowels of Petco Park. See, unfortunately, in trying to cover a baseball game, a 360 degree game, you can't have enough cameras. I mean, in World Series, they have 25, 30, but uh, you, you only have a few angles because you don't anticipate having yeah. a lot of plays like this. I think the high first was the definitive call. This is the best look, I think, because the ball's in the glove. He's in contact with Okay, Look at his hand. He's, he's got a batting glove in his hand, but I don't even think that batting glove has touched first base yet. I, I, I've got out. Bang, bang, but uh, I, I would agree. Call on the field, safe at first. They are reviewing it. And indeed, there's a successful challenge on the roll. Morrow has picked off Aoki. But to show you what a great job that our camera crew does here, and Mike Odino, our director, in covering a very difficult sport to cover because of the area, the 360 degree natures of the game. We have eight cameras compared to three times that for playoffs and World Series. And they had a couple of men right on the spot yeah. so that the call could be made successfully on the challenge. Do you know how hard it is to say take three that quickly in the truck when a pitcher spins and throws? <laughs> uh, that's that's not I don't easy. Know how they do Try it at home, folks. Take three. You got to be quick. So the base is job. empty. Two and zero oh to panic. Now two and one. So guys, you look at that move by Brandon Morrow, and we already have said about James Shields the great move, pickoff move to first base. Looked very similar, very athletic, and very quick feet. Yeah, different arm angle too, guys. It's almost like throwing a dart, like a quarterback, right? Getting rid of that pigskin quickly, right? You can't use the big arm swing. Quick feet, quick arm motion, throw a dart over to first base. There's a 94 mile an hour bullseye at the knees, two and two. Swing and a miss, strike three. Fools panic again with that changeup. Strikeout number six for Morrow. Great job. A pickoff and a strikeout. Still no score.
Lincecum as we go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Top of the order for San Diego, Myers, Spangenberg, and Kemp. Myers, youthful 24, always played up as a kid. He was nine playing with the 11 year olds in Little League. And sometimes you can go back to those Little League days and you'll see coach and they'll say, you know, he's, he may be the one. He may be that good someday. And Myers has. Uh, Reached that major league level and wants to improve upon all the promise as the minor league star and as the American League Rookie of the Year a couple of years ago. So far, three for 21 as a Padre. I smell a crooked number this half inning for the Friars. Way off speed. 73 drops it in for a strike. One and one. Both pitchers keeping the hitters off balance. Up the middle base hit. He beats the shift. He rattles that one through the left side between shortstop Crawford and Panic was playing over on the third base side. So the leadoff man on third hit off Lincecum. That ball was smoked. Will Myers sands the batting gloves. He's got some tape on his hand. Looks like as he gets through that one nicely, nice strong legs. Mark Sweeney, what do you know about that? Well, you see the tape on his hand. He's working on the blisters. He loves to know batting gloves. It's a feel for the bat. That he's looking at, but it looked like he had some good top hand on that swing right there. And that love to protect the wrist for a possible slide. And Spin has a good move as well. Benjenberg, the batter, he has one of the hits. You didn't see it, it's hard to believe. <laughs> he cued it off the head of the bat with so much English that it started in the grass foul and actually worked its way back across the dirt and the line into the grass fair for a hit. Guy's going to be pretty interesting here in this situation. Maybe it's Corey Spangenberg laying a bunt down but bunt for a base hit. Try to create something and try to get some offense going. Takes ball one. Yeah, last year they played 19 times these two rivals the Padres won 10 almost all of them close and almost all of them low scoring and here we go again another off speed Spangenberg double set there he started yep. set himself again but couldn't put it in play that one was elevated as well that was a good pitch for Corey Spangenberg to do some damage with. A lot of off speed pitches here this uh, at bat. Back to back off speed to go one and one. Ooh, watch out. That one a wicked low line drive into the crowd off to the left. A ball, two strikes to young Spangenberg. See if Will Myers gets a jump over there first. He kind of twitched before that last pitch as Litzkum lifted that leg. Myers has a couple of stolen bases. Yeah. Well, one and two, you never know. Uh, Litzkum might bounce one. It might be an off speed pitch as you take a look at the breakdown. 75 total. Hmm. Another high pitch at Spangenberg clips it straight back. Giants now working going back to their Arizona series. They took two out of three against the D-backs that held opponents scoreless for 20 consecutive innings. Third time through 304 against Tim Linscom. Here's the third time around for Will Myers. Now third time. Runner goes scoring. and it's fouled away. He was twitching a couple pitches before that. I'm just going to give you some added information about our television coverage and how many cameras there are eight man operated cameras and then they have these robotic cameras and fixed cameras like the one in our booth here that they never use and you know, they never show us so it doesn't matter <laughs> but that would count in the others wouldn't it. 
now, like that one right there. I mean, see, that actually is a cat. Well, that does work, doesn't it? You're looking mighty fine, and Thank Mr. You, Professor. I love that time. I'm going to steal that from you. Not looking. <laughs> uh, beg for FaceTime. That's awful. <laughs> Runner goes, and again, fouled away. Well, oh, that'll worry you out. Hey, Mark Sweeney, you, you know, you ran the bases quite a bit. It, does, how much does that take out of a runner when you, you steal like that, foul ball, and you slide? you got to go back. Yeah, you'll see a lot. And, and obviously the drop in stolen bases in the game of baseball, trying to reduce that. I mean, Matt Kemp, if you look at him and his steal rate at the beginning of his career, he took off a lot. Now he's scaled it back, and I think it has a lot to do with trying to stay in the lineup as long as you can. But it does wear yourself down, and obviously Will Myers is a little tired right now. Five consecutive foul balls by Spangenberg. A lot of those pitches up and off speed. Another pitch up. Two high, two and two. Good at bat for Spangenberg so far. Look in from the left field corner. And you know from a pitcher's standpoint this is just a little thought with, with Myers trying to go a couple times and then the foul ball this come might be thinking you know what I might want to throw a fastball here give my catcher a better chance of maybe throwing him out if it's swing and miss and he missed with the fastball up there. You know you might be thinking gosh if I throw a breaking ball here a you know it's going to give the runner some time and it's just a little bit of time that's all you need or I might bounce it that might work to the advantage of the runner. And that's what happened with Alonzo stealing yeah. earlier. Looks like an off-speed pitch here. Outside, now he went to the fastball, yeah. and again right at 88. So a full count now. Spangenberg, a very effective at bat. Nine pitches coming up. The ninth pitch. Yeah, Myers has been running earlier. You figure he's probably going here. He is. Swing and a miss. Throw by Sanchez. Right on the money. Beautiful throw. But it gets away. And safe as Myers. No. Did not get away. I think they may be calling interference on Spangenberg. He ended up way over in the right-handed batter's box. And here's the play at second base. And it looks as if he did beat the tag. Well, maybe not. Watch Spangenberg here on the swing and miss. His momentum carries him all the way over. But no, Sanchez no, made a terrific yeah. throw considering. Yeah, no contact was made. Vic Carapaza going over his explanation to Bud Black. No intent on Spanchenberg's right. part. It was part of his swing, and you saw he tried to duck out of the way. So the Padres get the leadoff man on, and a strikeout. Batter's interference. Two away for Kemp. Line drive left field, but it's carrying right to Aoki. Almost handcuffed him. Oh, the Padres hitting it hard, but finding gloves. And they're denied again to the seventh. No score.
brought to you by Saquon Casino. Only 30 minutes from Petco Park. By Jack in the Box. Head to Jack in the Box for Jack's Blazin' Chicken Sandwich. And by Jerome's Furniture. Proud sponsor of the best seats in the house. Six inning totals. The Giants no runs, four hits, no errors, two left. The Padres no runs, three hits, no errors, and three left. Padres have had some hard hit balls go right into the gloves of the Giants. Good example, Kemp's clothesline shot to left to close out the sixth inning. Pagan, Posey, and Crawford for the Giants here in the seventh against Brandon Morrow. is really incredible they've played 18 innings the equivalent of two full games in this series with not an earned run being scored. You know that interesting play when Will Myers they, they might, that last half inning Dick. Right. It, it, it could, because if it was batter interference the runner would have been going back to first base. They must have banged Myers. That's right. right. Strike three. And to throw him out. It's strike him out, throw him out. Yeah. We should get uh, somebody to go over to the official score and, and double check on that. So swing and a miss. Throw him out, strike him out, throw him out. But the uh, replay was debatable as to whether or not he was out. Yeah, I thought he was safe. A gone check swing foul. Two and one. Penn becomes busy. Frank Garces, the left hander. Looks like Sean Kelly, the right hander. Morrow now at 74 pitches. And it goes three and one. Well, you can't ask for much more from Brandon Morrow. He's given the Padres six solid shutout innings in his first ever appearance in that Padre uniform. And he lost Pagan, the leadoff man on with a walk. Second free pass from Morrow. Let's go down to Chris Button. Chris. Dick, you were talking about Morrow and his type 1 diabetes, and he's been very open about it. And it's inspired a lot of kids with everything that he has to deal with. And a dad came up to me today and said his 6-year-old daughter was just diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. And was so excited when Morrow signed. In fact, he said that the first words out of her mouth after the deal went through, awesome sauce from a little six-year-old girl. So <laughs> neat to see just the way that him dealing with that has inspired others. You know, that's uh, you know, part of the athlete's responsibility, isn't it? And it's uh, great that he has been open about it. Thanks for that report. But it's an uh, interesting situation where he has to monitor that blood sugar count throughout and said it goes up when you pitch. So after each inning he goes back in and checks on that. See whether he needs insulin. But he fell behind Pagan and walked him and now he's 2 and 0 oh down to Posey who has a couple of hits tonight. He, this is the most work that uh, he's had all spring. Moral. Over but low. Three and zero. Oh. Meanwhile, Tim Lincecum, once again, as he has uh, in the last couple of years, handcuffing the Padre hitters. Green light, Posey. No. Yeah, there's a ball anyway. So back to back walks not a good sign here in the seventh as Morrow may be tiring. And here comes Darren Balsley out to at least give him a little rest. We're going to take a look at Brandon Morrow and his off speed pitches. He's thrown some good off speed pitches change ups and breaking balls alike. Here is a change up that dips down and away. You can tell by the swing of Crawford throwing off the timing once again down and in righty on righty this time. Swing and a miss. Bad looking hack. Is this a breaking ball? You betcha. Gets on top. Good spin to Aoki. 
So both sides of the plate, good off-speed pitches, good arm speed. Very successful night tonight for Brandon Morrow. It's a good line right there. Crawford not bunting, although the infield uh, was playing it defensively as if he were trying to lay one down. Spanchenberg at the cut of the grass. Alonso playing deeper at first base. Crawford is struck out and bounced into a double play. Yeah, through the years, Bruce Bochy's been one of those managers who really doesn't like to give up outs. You know, they only have 27 of them, so. Now the bun and it's foul. Now he's in the hole 0 and 2. This is a spot for a strikeout. It's him swinging. That's huge. And we just got done talking about the off-speed pitch. That is the curveball down and in. Curveball slider, whatever it was. Good tilt down by the back foot. Got the double play in order with that strikeout. McGee, a good candidate for the double play and not a good runner. Right. Look at that. Sneaking, the, sneaking the fastball by him, right? That's something we talked about earlier. Morrow has thrown his off speed pitches so effectively tonight that. It might be in the back of their head thinking about it and then all of a sudden bam Smith missed that uh, slipped that 93 94 mile an hour fastball by this one misses on the changeup McGee is struck out and grounded to third. Pagan at second post he at first with leadoff walks. No score. We're in the top of the seventh here at Petco. It's the outside corner with a 94 mile an hour heater. First inning 95 on the speed comparison, and look at that. Just a, a, a tick under 95 here in the top of the seventh. After pitch 86. Mm, good stop. Norris, that ball wasted away. Two and two. Bullpen is ready if needed. Morrow has taken the Padres into the seventh inning with shutout pitching, but a couple of walks in jeopardy here in the seventh. Shot to Alonzo goes to second for one. Back to first. A double play. Three six one with Morrow covering at first. Oh my! Another shutout game. Another game packed with double play balls. The third turn by the Padres tonight.
go back to the double play. One hopper at Alonzo, no hesitation after he knocked it down to Amarista, and that's Morrow hustling over there to cover and complete the 3 6 1 double play. Yeah, how about that reaction by Brandon Morrow? You betcha. A great play all the way around. 12 double plays in the two games of this series. And that explains in part why there's no scoring. Joaquin Benoit now takes over warming up in the Padre pen. Upton has struck out and lined to short. He's hit safely in each of the first four games of the season. As they announce the attendance here tonight on Friday night, a crowd of 39,130. Forty five thousand last night and expect another big big house tomorrow Saturday night and of course on military Sunday always a favorite of fans. And tomorrow night especially with that pitching matchup James Shields and Madison Bumgarner that's a. Mm -hmm. Treasured ticket. He goes around two and two. Working toward the 90 pitch count, Lincecum. Up the middle and trickles through into center field. Good direction for Upton. He now is hit safely in all five games. The leadoff man on again for San Diego. Got the fastball, high fastball. Might even a little cut fastball at that, but up, staying on top of it. And as good as the uh, the middle infielders are for the Giants there no chance of getting that one. Derek Norris. A long shot to left center field. Ioki made a fine running catch to deny him extra bases last time up. He walked in the second. High fly ball shallow center. Pagan with an easy chance coasts in under it. One away. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the San Diego Padres and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. But the accounts and description of this game may not be disseminated without the express consent of the San Diego Padres. Yonder Alonso wrapped into a double play and single. Also stole his first base of the season. Nice hole to shoot at on the right side with. Posey, the first baseman holding on the runner. And a gap in right center. Runner goes. Ball low and outside, and Sanchez, no chance. Threw that one from his knees. Upton with his first Padre steal. And with one out, that elusive run is in scoring position. Tim Lincecum trying to utilize everything in his motion by not using the slide step. He uses the traditional high leg kick. Used it all game. Justin Upton gets a good jump. It's a bad pitch. Runner in scoring position. Has stolen eight bases each of the last two years. He'll give you an occasional extra 90 feet. And so it is tonight. 2 0 oh to Alonzo. Well, it looks like the Giants have got the double barrel working in their bullpen. 91 pitches now for Lincecum. Jerko would be next. Now they're going to walk him. Set up the double play. There have been a dozen of them in the two games of the series. Why not? Second intentional walk from Lincecum. Three total in the game. And that gives us a chance to remind you closed captioning is brought to you by Wiener Schnitzel. Javier Lopez. He might be ready for uh, this Mero Petit as the right hander. Yeah, if something happens here with Jerko, you got the 
Lefty Amarista on deck. So I have Lopez getting hot and ready. But remember, Bud Black, he can always counter with Clint Barmas. Done that before. And will Middlebrooks also That's available? That's right. If Bochy goes to Lopez after Jerko. Jerko has been up twice, struck out both times by Lincecum. It's time for Jed Jerko to bust out here. Third time around. Right center Jed. wide open. And what an inviting target that is. Ball one. Upton at second. Alonso at first. Not foul. With the head of the bat cued away. Lipscomb's been getting some pitches up in the zone. Interesting. Pagan has just taken about five steps more toward straightaway center. And there's still a big gap in right center. Ground ball to third. Double play ball. There's one. And back to first on another double play. Oh, another rough night for Jerko. Two strikeouts and a double play. On to the eighth. Still no score. Pomerantz working on Padres Live. The post game show will be brought to you by Cox Communications. We've got a lot to get to, and chief among them, it's going to be Brandon Morrow's first night out here at Petco Park. Number five starter with outstanding stuff, and I talked about that on our pregame, but you could see working all pitches on their arm side, and then he would go on this glove side. He had everything working tonight. Great arm speed on that changeup, which you saw some awkward swings. He got ahead of hitters and made them feel very uncomfortable tonight. What a great first start in a Padre uniform for Brandon Morrow. When we see you in the post game show we're not only going to talk about how well the defense was but more of his defense as well remember this is a guy who has a 17 strikeout performance to his resume so you might want to think about being surprised you maybe shouldn't be he's really that good when we see you in the post game show we'll have everything to happen tonight plus we've got a preview of Padres POV and wait until you see what James Shields was doing with our alley Sturm on a skateboard it was a little dicey guys but it's a lot of fun we'll see you after the final out. All right, Mike Joaquin Benoit comes in to pitch the eighth inning. Here's the line on Morrow. Seven innings, no runs, four singles, three walks, and seven strikeouts. The El Cajon pitching change, El Cajon Ford. Joaquin Benoit. Third appearance of the new season. And he'll face Blanco, Sanchez, and Lincecum spot. We'll see if Bruce Bochy goes to a Pinch hitter, the pitch count up for Lincecum.
Brandon Belt suffered a mild groin pull. Broken bat, center field. Can Jerko get out there? Makes the catch! Tough, tough play. Well done, Jed Jerko. Willie May style over the shoulder. Whoa, he swiped at it and held on. And Benoit liked it. Whenever a guy hits one off the end of the bat or gets jammed, you get that little dunk around the shallow outfield. Boy, that second baseman, the shortstop, you really have to get a good first jump. That's as good as a player you're going to see right there. Nice job by Jed Jerko picking up Joaquin Benoit. Our late colleague Jerry Coleman would have hung a star on that one, wouldn't he? Absolutely. Hector Sanchez has struck out and grounded out facing Morrow. No runs, four hits aside. All singles. Jose Valentin uh, working the defense. They have the shift on. Jerko playing shallow right field. Pull on the right side and also in the outfield playing the opposite way in the air. Pops him up left side. Spanchenberg is the only player over there for the Padres. Plenty of time. Oh, no, it's Amarista who stayed on the third base side with Spanchenberg moving over on the second base side. <laughs> Alexi. With the pop fly. You know, Alexi, I would have to say he's got the better range there being the shortstop, so that's why they elected to keep him on that side solo while Corey went over towards second base. Here's the pinch hitter for Lincecum. It's the star for the Giants last night with his pinch hit single in the 12th inning to knock in the unearned run, Justin Maxwell. Base is empty. Two out. Scoreless tie. Nick Benson got in on the barrel of the bat, but he's able to push it into center field, and that scored the winning run as Ryan Crawford came in after he was safe on the two base error by Clint Barmas. One and two. Nice slider by Joaquin Benoit. He's change up heavy for a secondary pitch. Fastball change up, and he pulls the string on this one. Not even close. Maxwell, two for seven as a giant. His RBI yesterday is first in San Francisco. Everything's down and away. Go back out there. Slow roller to the first baseman, Alonso, and it's an easy one, two, three inning for Benoit. Bottom of the eighth inning. Padres up. Jerko's had trouble with the bat, but he makes amends there with a terrific catch.
Padres Baseball, brought to you by Mercury Insurance. You could get two free Padre tickets. Learn more at mercuryinsurance.com. By Petco, what we feed them matters. And by your San Diego Lexus dealer. Bottom of the eighth inning, a new pitcher for the Giants. Javier Lopez and Will Middlebrooks will pinch hit for Amarista. Check that. It's uh, they've changed it. Jeremy Affelt is the new pitcher. Lopez had been warming up and Affelt yeah, heated up in a hurry. Middlebrooks aligns at the left and it's carrying right to Aoki. <laughs> Man. Padres hitting in tough luck tonight. Oh. Can't ask well, for better contact than that. Yeah, the new pitcher, uh, Will Middlebrooks, being in there for uh, Alexi Amarista in the number eight spot. Hey, you get that first pitch fastball or anywhere around the plate, go to Hackett because Jeremy Affelt is one tough pitcher as Craig Kimbrell heats up in the poverty pen. Clint Barmas then will bat for Benoit. And then Will Myers to follow in the last of the eighth inning. As it was last night, all the way to the twelfth inning without a score. Then an unearned run winning it for the Giants. No score here, and we're one out into the eighth inning. Strike zone kind of expanding a little bit on that last call. Fouled away. Two strengths. And a ball on Barmas. Who's going to break this scoreless tie? Line drive foul. He missed with that pitch. He wanted it down. Sanchez was tapping his glove on the ground just before that pitch and he left it up. Clinton was way out in front of it. So Lincecum goes seven innings, no runs, four hits, walked three, two of them intentional, and struck out five. So his mastery of the Padres continues. Two and two. Hey, Brandon Morrow can't say enough about the right hander tonight. First start in a, in a Padre uniform. A plus. Absolutely. Just as Odrisimer Despagne starred on the mound in long relief yep. yesterday. In the dirt again, three and two. Let's see if he went, and I'll be honest with you. I thought he went. What do you think, Dick? You could be honest. Yeah, I think that barrel of the bat it has to at least come perpendicular to home plate. I mean, if it's still back, the barrel of the bat mm -hmm. at home plate, then I'm going to give the hitter the, the advantage. But that's strictly a quick judgment by the umpire yeah. there at first. And that's a tough call because it happens so quickly. Ball four, a good at bat for Barnes. He was behind on the count, works a walk with one away here in the eighth. Tying run out there with one gone as. We remind you that today's game is presented in HD by Sony 4K. That's a lot of strikeouts, 4K. Yeah, that'd be 4,000, right? Yeah. Something like that. You see Randy Johnson, Nolan Ryan. <laughs> Nolan Ryan alone is 5,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the Padres have a man aboard on the walk. Let's see if they can take advantage. Myers, one for three, singled his last time up. The uh, the turnstiles, you know, they clicked so quickly tonight that they uh, gave initial attendance of 39,000. Now we've got a recount, and it's 40,015 tonight. Nice. So a couple of big crowds to start the series, and two more expected tomorrow night and Sunday afternoon. Now the ball hit well to right field, back, 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 and off the wall. Comes away. Puts the Here he comes around for Barnes. Here's the relay. 
and he scores! The Padres lead 1-0. example of the strength of Will Myers. That line drive kept carrying right over the head of Blanco. And Barmas running all the way, able to dare the Giants on a relay to throw him out. That is some kind of strong. Well, that didn't even look like it was his best swing. It was effortless. Ball jumps off his back. Glenn Hoppin waving around the big boy. Sanchez got in the way. Couldn't hold on. Boy, that, that could be nasty for anybody when you get your hand clipped by a runner. Barmas touches home plate with his hand. And uh, Myers hustles over to third base on the throw to the plate. Off the bat, late at night, you figured that Blanco had a chance to catch that ball, but it was hit so hard, it sailed by Blanco yeah, and Karam just enough to get Barmas that uh, threat to come all the way and <laughs> Glenn Hoffman said I haven't been able to wave my arm in two days I'm going to send you home kid oh absolutely because you know with the way things have been going you know the Padres have been hitting some balls on the sweet spot they've just been hitting, finding the holes this is the opportunity where Glenn Hoffman gets that windmill going send him home and credit Barmas with that walk to yep. position himself for the first run of the game. Now with one out, a chance to add to the lead. You know, Jan Solarte will hit for Spanchenberg. Sanchez, see how his arm, oh, wrist, elbow, forearm? That could be nasty. Had that been a good throw in the relay, then they would have gotten Barmas with the throw up the line, and that allowed him to circle around the potential tag. Spangenberg was one for three tonight. An infield hit. The infield draws in. Salarte fouls it away. Switch hitting Salarte. Only his third at bat from the right side. 0 for 2. Hitting left handed. He's 2 for 4. That's a big run out there. Mm -hmm. Give the Padres a two run cushion. Way outside. And that camp on deck. With that infield in, Affeld's trying to work down to the zone. But with that said, a pitcher working down to the zone, you top that baseball, you get a chopper over the infielder's heads. Also Myers, cuts down the range. Myers there at third with his first extra base hit. Chases the ball down low. One and two. And his second RBI, Myers. McGee, Crawford on the left side. Panic and Posey on the right side. In tight, hitter's delight. Up the middle. And no chance for Myers to come in. Crawford throws out Solarte. Now the infield will move back. It's up to Matt Kemp to try to add to the one nothing lead. Matt is grounded to third. Crawford made a good play on him at shortstop to throw him out, and then he whistled a line drive to left, but went right to Aoki. 0 for 3, a tough 0 for 3 for Kemp. See if a uh, little bit of delay here and see if Bruce Bochy makes a move here to a righty. Yeah, here he comes. With that slow stroll from Bruce Bochy. So a walk and a Will Myers double gets Barmas around. And finally the Padres have a run. They had gone 22 innings in a row without scoring. Take a break right here.
Bottom of the eighth inning to take the one nothing lead. Two outs and Yasmero Petit. Right hander comes in to face Matt Kemp. Myers at third. Two outs. Last season's numbers. It's one of those swing guys who can start. Put together a nice little season there. Fastball change up curveball slider. Last 10 appearances dating back to last year as a reliever. 17 and two thirds innings. Scoreless for the right hander. And he uh, started 12 games for the Giants when they needed that spot starter and uh, usually pitched very effectively. Yeah. Brought in to face Matt Kemp. Kemp hitting in tough luck. A couple of hard hit balls for outs tonight. He's 0 for 3. Myers 90 feet away from making it a 2 nothing game. Breaking ball in the dirt and Kemp did not pull back and uh, I don't know if in his backswing did he clip catcher Sanchez. Let's take a look at that. Oh, it was the ball itself that bounced up. Oh, oh and then the bat. Oh yeah. my goodness. His his helmet came off. Keeping the run. Then Matt just uh, inadvertently just. I mean, it just the weight of the yeah. bat hits the back. Sanchez has had a rough inning. Strike two. Oh, that's perfectly placed. Absolutely. That's paint right there. Justin Upton would like to get another chance to swing. He's one for three tonight. Pretty good pitch. That could have been a call to strike. Same spot. Knee high, outside corner. Craig Kimbrell is ready for the ninth inning, and Aoki Panic and Pagan and Posey, if anyone gets on, scheduled for the Giants. Yeah, I hear some thunder and lightning in that Padre bullpen. Sounded faster than it was recorded. 87 just inside. 40,015 and the Padre fans finally with a chance to cheer in this series with a run here in the eighth inning. They've had a chance to cheer some double plays and great pitching but to cheer a run. Chasing strike three. So Petit strands Myers at third the Padres settle for a run ninth inning coming up and Craig Kimball will try to log his first save as a Padre. First save. He pitched an inning last night. Pitched out a big trouble. A leadoff triple by Pagan and 
was able to get a pop fly and a ground ball double play to get out of that ninth inning. His third appearance tonight as a Padre. You know where you are? You're in the jungle, baby. Coming out to some guns and roses and guns a blazing for Craig Kimbrell. Hitting the 97 mile an hour Mike mark consistently last night with this fastball. Aoki has a couple of hits. Posey has the other two collected by the Giants tonight. As Morrow allowed only the four hits in his seven innings, and Benoit worked the perfect eighth inning. Sure, that's a good feeling for the Padres and Brandon Morrow to have Craig Kimbrell out there to uh, save it here in the ninth. Two singles and a strikeout for Aoki. Mm. At the knees at 96. If uh, Pagan has fared well, two for five with that triple yesterday. There's the 97 inside. Karma stays in the game at short. Middlebrook's at third. Kimbrell, you could insert him into the second spot in the batting order. Hopefully, we won't get around to him or that position. That. Things will end for the Padres right here. Too low. Two and one for the slap hitting Aoki. And with his style, you would think he's a pretty good fastball hitter. Mm -hmm. Doesn't overswing. All four of those pitches down. That's where he wants to be. Here's Pagan who tripled last night. He'll hit third in the inning. Line. A short hop by Middlebrooks. He stays with it and throws him out. Boy. That ball was hit sharply, and Middlebrooks able to glove it. One away. And it's time now for the Cholula flame throw. Craig Kimbrell out there, 97, and that is some serious hot sauce from the Padre closer. Good pitch. He hit his spot. Why? Because Will Middlebrooks was right there. Didn't even have to move on the short hop for the 5-3 play. Joe Panic has struck out twice and grounded the short. All against starter Brandon Morrill. Staying down at the knees, strike one. Pagan next. One nothing Padres. We're in the top of the ninth. Kimbrell trying to close the door on a Padre win and earn his first San Diego save. Base hit the right field. Sharply struck by Panic. Tying run is on. And here comes Pagan. All the fuss about Pagan because of late yesterday in the game, the incident, verbal as all, with uh, Derek Norris, the catcher. So I'm scrape away uh, some gum that Pagan threw down at his feet, and there were some harsh words, and the umpire stepped in and then warned both benches. A bit of overreaction by the umpire. But no harm done. So he followed with a triple to center field with no one out. Yeah, he worked the count to three and two. He got the fastball and he was left stranded. A fiery guy, hot blooded. To admire his his passion. In the dirt, first breaking ball thrown by Kimbrell. One and one.
Couple of walks tonight, and he lined into a double play, Pagan. He's got six hits on the season, all but one extra bases, four doubles, and that triple. Padre fans with the champ. Field corner would have been big trouble. A lot of funny bounces in that left field side. You can see what the guy trying to do, just get that bat head out there and let the power of Kimball do all the work off the wall. That seven feet foul. One ball, two strikes. Breaking ball. Pagan steps out. Time called. Maybe we'll get another look at the signs here, professional. See what Craig Kimball is thinking along with Derek Morris. Backdoor breaking ball. If two is in fact. Curve ball. Ground ball up the middle. There's one. Back to first. Play, and the ball game is over. Another double play to punch away to one nothing Padre win. Turnabout is fair play. One nothing Giants now one nothing Padres. Will Myers with the big double. The win it for the Padres in the eighth inning. What a great night all the way around. Brandon Morrow, a great outing. Seven solid innings. Benoit, he's your eighth inning guy. And Kimbrell, nice going, Pots. Fourth double play. Closes it out. One nothing. Padres live. The postgame show coming up. Michael. Guys, got to stick around for the postgame show. Clint Barnes, who scored that game winning run, is going to join us live to tell us what a win like this can mean to a team looking to catch fire. And you're going to hear from Buddy Black his thoughts on a big night in a moment.